Hi everybody, I'm Jim Erickson. I'm the Editorial Director at InformationManagement.com. I'm at the TDWI World Conference in Las Vegas with Frank Boutendijk, who's a very noted speaker and author in the worlds of data and information management for many, many years. He's been giving out a lot of good advice and, and following a lot of industry trends. One of the things Frank is talking about here in his keynote address and in a follow-up session at TDWI is the notion of analytical ethics or ethics and analytics. What, is, what does that mean to you, Frank? Well, with um, innovation going so fast, uh, technology taking away so many borders and lifting so many constraints and boundaries, um, giving so much scale and, and so much power, the questions around technologies and the best practices move. Where for the last 20 years, I think we focused on how to do things. Yeah. The question now really is moving on like, why to do things if you have all that power at your fingertips yeah, yeah. what are you going to do with it right and and where where would it where would it stop are there things that you shouldn't do yeah. are there things <laughs> that would create an enormous mess look at the whole credit crunch for instance right. that was about models right. that uh, right. with data modeling um, with very complex um, uh, mathematical calculations that no one mm -hmm. understood anymore, that just got out of hand. The yeah. model started to rule the world instead right. of the other way around. Right. Yeah, yeah, it seems like we're almost doing things because we can. You know, mm -hmm. we're sort of experimenting yeah. mm -hmm. on this frontier because we don't even know the boundaries quite mm -hmm. yet. So, you know, people do worry about things like marketing analytics, getting into their private information. What would be uh, an example of something that's unethical to you in terms of the borders we're testing mm -hmm. now? Do you have a sort of a, yeah, well, any kind of thoughts on that? Let's start, for instance, with uh, with public sector. Um, the uh, There is always a tension between the freedom that we have as a citizen and the protection that we need as a citizens as well. Uh, yeah. For instance, um, against terrorism and that that border is is uh, or the, the 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 balance between um, those two is continuously shifting sure uh -huh. so um, there is so much data integration going on in um, in public sector that i don't think that public sector organizations themselves know no. yeah. uh, what is integrated and what's not to give you one idea there are some early examples about electronic uh, identity theft yeah. mm -hmm. and the moment uh, someone uses your identity and lands in some kind of public sector organization database, stuff gets integrated so quickly that there have been cases already where even when the, when, when the government says like, uh, well, we, we were wrong, you were right, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, it'll never go, uh, it is um, in so many databases, it'll never ever go away again. And that is simply not thinking through the consequences yeah. of, of data integration harming people. Uh, another example is modern data mining tools. Let's take a technology example. Uh, they can create aut autom automatic reports with the most important or interesting things sure. that, that they find in databases. Sure. So, for instance, all of a sudden you could get an email in your inbox from a tool that says, I found an interesting correlation between the age of our customers and the fraud levels. In short, old people cheat. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, that may be right. Um, and um, you may decide not to take action on it because you think it is somehow not the right way of customer segmentation, but the moment something like that hits the newspapers, oh my oh, yeah. goodness. The yeah. key thing here is that technology is answering questions that weren't even asked. asked. Exactly so. And I do not know of any analytical tool, the tool that has an unlike button. So there is <laughs> tools, there's tools creating ethical issues yes. uh -huh. and we don't even have the mechanisms to do something about it. Yeah. And, or another example, uh, look at um, uh, what is Google has been doing with Street View and the collecting the data. Yeah, or yeah what, that's a big what, is, what, what, what Facebook is doing all the time, sure. collecting data. Sure. We are not Google and Facebook customers. Right. Um, we're the product. It's the, the advertisers right. that are the customers. And, yeah. and boy, will they, will they run into some, uh, some ethical discussions over the coming years. And maybe they won't even survive. Oh, and even answering questions that weren't asked. You know, mm -hmm. when, you, when you think about putting this in the hands of bureaucrats and policies, mm -hmm. it's going to scare a lot of people. I, I remember reading that uh, you could, you could, an actuary could track your likelihood of contracting diabetes mm -hmm. by GPS and how much time you were at the ice cream store and how much mm -hmm. time you were at the gym, right? But we also have a tremendous, uh, you can draw any kind of picture. We have mm -hmm. these, also a lot of people are using this data too to connect and mm -hmm. LinkedIn. What's a, a positive aspect of this we can look to in terms of the way people have adapted to this mm -hmm. so quickly there's got to be a lot of benefit for people too so I think first of all uh, let's let's have a look at what 
ethics really means. Ethics is in the end just um, 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 a posh word for, for creating a win-win situation. Yeah. We, have, we display ethical behavior, is everything that I do is good for you and is good for me um, as well. Right. So for, uh, with all these analytics, I think lots of these analytics should be fed back to, uh, to, the, to the consumers. Um, why uh, doesn't use? Why doesn't Facebook use all these analytics also for the good of the community, so that it can create yeah, some kind of a, a global or, or regional thermometer on what is what is going on in the world, so that, that yeah. we know how people think about uh, mm -hmm. things, or just um, in, in, in creating a business case for a system. Take for instance. Um, large ERP systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, business case for that is about more efficiency, um, uh, efficiencies of scale, um, shared service centers, higher effectiveness uh, for the organization. But um, do those systems also are those systems also good for the people that need to work with it? Yeah. One way of looking at um, what technology means is that uh, technology should augment human capabilities. And a lot yeah. of current systems just make people dumb. <laughs> um, if there's there's a great book by Dan Pink, it's called Drive, and yeah. he describes uh, he describes the three factors that motivate uh, professionals: uh, autonomy, mastery, and purpose is what okay. he calls them. Why don't we build business cases that are based on that? How can we make uh, yeah. administrative professionals yeah. um, um, more or less autonomous in their in their operational decision making within the boundaries of the yeah. policies that they need to work with? Um, why does mastery mean that you need to master all the 74 screens of the ERP system yeah. instead of mastering your business? It, it feels we're moving beyond that. It, mm -hmm. it just does. And but the, but you're right. The, the 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 volume and the velocity of data now and the ability to do so much of it. it I think we're just really on the frontier of things. We we still are, we don't know what the outcomes are going to be. But this is a time when we can start asking these questions and seeing some of these outcomes and a lot of those outliers that are going to mess with our mm -hmm. worlds. I think and we're going to mm -hmm. learn from. But it you know for someone like you who's been around it so long. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing to me how things are exciting all over again mm -hmm. in data. So uh, thank you, Frank uh, Bautendijk, for joining us today here at the TDWI World Conference in Las Vegas. I'm Jim Erickson. Thanks. Bye.